Right. And so, Carolyn, take me back to that day. Um, what was your day like um, before the tornado? Tell me what your day was, October 3rd, 1979. A friend and I were um, putting flyers on cars in different parking lots in town because our church, Paquanic Community Church, was having a chicken barbecue on Saturday. And so we went to this place, it was called Pace at the time, it was a warehouse foods, and that was down, oh, in the southern part of Windsor. And so we put flyers all over those cars, and then we went to Geisler's in the center of town and put flyers on all those cars. And it was getting a little late, so we decided that we would head home, and it was probably about, oh, a little after, around two o'clock, maybe a little bit before. And this friend of mine lived in Colonial Village, and I lived where I still live now on Birchwood Road. So I went home and it started to rain and I had to pick my daughter up from Brownies at about <clears throat> three o'clock. So I got in, the I got in my sister's car because she had flown out to Florida that morning and I was gonna jockey cars around when I got home. And I went to pick up a book. It used to be the Hathaway Library where Mahaney's is now. And so I went into the library to pick up a book that I had in reserve, and it was pouring, just pouring rain. And so I got in there, and I took off my raincoat, put it on the back of a chair, and I was talking to Alice Lavoie, who was the librarian at the time. And I said, that sounds awful. It sounds like a tornado. Now, I had never been in a tornado, but it was just what I had heard that, you know, sounds like a freight train. I said, do you have a basement? And she said, no. We went into the corner of the library, and it it just blew the wind. It imploded the windows. They were like 15-foot plate glass windows, and it, it just shattered them inward. And so um, when it was over, uh, I went and put my coat on because my daughter was at Brownies at St. Joseph's Church in the basement, and there were shards of glass through my coat. There were shards of glass through... Uh, hardbound books and you know I asked Alice if she was okay and she was of course there were no phone lines nobody had cell phones then um, so I it St. Joseph's is practically next door to where Haney's is now and I um, got in my car to go get my daughter to make sure she was okay and I was sitting on the windshield of my sister's car that had imploded so I decided this was not a good idea to drive my car, her car. So I walked over to the church. It was totally black. The girls were in the basement. And so um, I went into the chancel area of behind the altar, not knowing that you're not supposed to do that. And I took all the candles off the altar and brought them downstairs and lit them all. <laughs> of course, when my Catholic friends heard about that, they did not think that was a good idea. <laughs> But the girls were scared to death. And so I got my daughter. There were other mothers coming and getting their children. And so I got my daughter. And um, we didn't know how we were going to get home. And in the meantime, my son was in the seventh grade. And he had taken a bus at 2 o'clock from Sage Park to get home. So I didn't even know if he had made it home or not. So finally someone, I don't even know who it was, someone came by with a pickup truck and we got in the back of the pickup truck and he was just dropping people off wherever they could drop them. And I got home and my son was there and thank goodness. And it just felt kind of strange because everything had been devastated in that area. Um, you could see windows floating down the road on Paquanic Avenue. Um, it looked like the tornado had hopped over houses. It hit Paquanic School. And so, you know, getting home and having your house intact and you could talk on the phone, you had electricity, but it was, it was, just, it was just really, really strange and couldn't get a hold of any of my friends in that area to make sure they were all right. But later on I heard that uh, my minister, Jim Silver, who was the minister of Pequannock Community Church at the time, had walked through Colonial Village to make sure people were okay. So... You know, that that was that day. It was Wow. Um, so let's let's go back to um, when you were in the library. Um, did it did Al Alice, right? Alice was her name. The librarian Alice? Lavoy, yes. Lavoy, okay. So did 
did you have to convince Alice to go? No, no, <laughs> no. She, she didn't know what it was either, but it just sounded really, really strong, you know. And what happened, try to, because uh, I know your, 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 uh, your daughter was on your mind to get out of there and go get her, but do you remember what it looked like in the library after that window imploded? Can you describe that a little bit? There was just glass everywhere. Um, some books were out of the shelves, and it was just, it lo looked like somebody had ransacked it. What did, um, after the fact, what was, did, uh, I'm sure you checked back with, with Alice, uh, tell me what the rest of her day was after you left, do you know? I, I can't remember. I can't, I know I stopped by her house. She lived on Kennedy Road at the time, and I know I stopped by her house to see if she was okay. After having the two of us gone through that, you kind of get this connection. Um, I don't think she worked too much longer at that library, and I think that um, they even closed that library after a while. You know, it was a cute little library. It was, it was nice because if you reserved books and you lived where I did, that you didn't have to go all the way down to the center of town. But um, so they closed it, and that's when different people owned it at different times. But uh, so, so now you're, you've left... You've left the library, you're frantic, you, gotta, you know that something just happened and you need to go find your daughter, you know where she is. Um, tell me what was the first thing when you, when you got to the church, um, was it, what, tell me what the church looked like, tell me what you saw when you got there. Well, you kind of came in a, in a side door that went down the stairs. And so I went downstairs and it was just dark and there were some other parents there. Obviously there were brownie leaders there. And um, my daughter came up to me and there were, some of the girls were crying and she said, she was in second grade at the time. And she said, I wasn't crying, but my knees were knocking. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter whether you were crying or not. I could understand if you were, but you know, I was just glad that she was okay. I'm glad all the girls were okay because that could have been horrendous if that building had ever gone down with all those children in the basement because they had no way of getting out. Did, does she ever talk about, does your daughter ever talk about that day? No. They had to go to a different school. They went to Ellsworth because they closed Pequannock down. Some went to Ellsworth, some went to JFK. And so she, she went to Ellsworth for the rest of the year until they could restore it. But there wasn't much talk about it. You know, it, it's just something that happened. And, you know, the days after that, we were helping different people and doing different things. And Ella Grassa was governor at the time, and she was phenomenal. Tell me about that. Tell me about it. We've heard that a lot during these interviews. The next question? day, um, another friend of mine who lived in my area, um, she and I made a bunch of sandwiches, and we brought it to people in Colonial Village. And so... There was another house on um, Pequannock, and it was a very good friend of my husband's, and it was an older home. And we stopped in on them to see how they were doing, and they said that their insurance agent had just been there and claimed that their house was okay, but they had a crack in the foundation. So this friend and I went, and, we, and Ella Grasso was in Colonial Village at the time. So this friend went up to her and said, I have a friend up the street and the insurance agency is telling them that their house is okay and there's a crack in their foundation. And so she said, do you have a car? And I said, I have a car. And she said, she took her insurance commissioner and she said, you go with them and go up to their house. And we did. And they got a new house. That's, that was the way she did it. Also, from what I heard, um, they wanted, some people wanted to, uh, not the people who had damaged homes, but some people wanted all the trailers that they were gonna live in while they watched the rebuilding of their homes. They wanted them to go up at, to Bradley. And Ella said, no, those trailers go on their property so that they can watch the rebuilding of their homes. And it was like, that, that was her. That was what she was all about family, all about taking care of people. You know, she was, she was phenomenal. We heard that, we heard that quite a bit. Um, so did, when you made those sandwiches, did you have trouble getting back into the neighborhood? No. No. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't like what it would have been today with a terrorist attack or something like that. N nothing was really blocked off. Aquanic Avenue was open by then. Um, so, 
you know, we just drove into where we knew. And, um, you know, we did take some pictures. Um, other people took pictures. We saw how it just seemed to jump over every other house. You know, the stories that people told us, one person said she was standing at her kitchen window and she saw the shutters from the front of her house go by her window. And that's when she took her kids and her mother-in-law and went down in the basement. Um, you know, just things like that. And things you miss after the fact, like going for a recipe. It's not there. You know, one woman I talked to and she said, see the blue rug across the street, because she lived across the street from the cemetery, St. Joseph Cemetery. She says, see that blue rug hanging from the cross? I said, yeah. She said, that's my rug. Nothing else was left in her house. Nothing. Totally gone. Everything gone. Even everything out of the basement. It was like the basement had just been poured. So what was your... What was your feeling, um, because you went home after, you know, getting your daughter and, and um, making sure your son was safe, and then the, there must have been that one first moment when you be went back into the, when you went to that neighborhood. Do you remember your, your feeling? Where it, Guilt. Mm -hmm. Guilt, because I had everything I had the day before. I had my kids, I had my husband, I had my friends who lived near me. Um, I had electricity, I had everything I needed, and they didn't. And you feel that, you know, they talk about survivor's guilt. Now, there were only two people who died, and I didn't know them. But in a way, it was kind of like I survived this, and I was okay. They would never be the same again. Most people stayed and watched the rebuilding of their homes, but others didn't. They left. And, you know, it's, yeah. What did you witness when you were there as far as the neighborhood working together, supporting each other? Can you talk about that a little? I think everybody comes together in some, when there's a tragedy. Um, my church, part of it was blown down. We still had the chicken barbecue on Saturday. We still did that. Um, Bruce Chamberlain put it on. And we still had services every Sunday. We had them in the parlor instead of in the sanctuary um, because that was destroyed. Um, you know, we, it, the, it was a community, and our kids all went to the same school, and you know, we, we, that part of it, we were all going through it together. Um, we, we had your, your, your minister here, and um, he Did you? <laughs> yeah, he was great. I called him and told him I was gonna mention his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he, he Cause did. I worked for him for five years as well. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he gave a, um, he, he really talked about how this experience uh, changed the relationships in your church because it was a rebuilding process. Mm. Can you talk about that a little bit? I was on the building committee at the time. Um, at the, so they just pitched in. Everybody just pitched in. It was our church and we wanted to see it rebuilt. And, you know, we were all shown designs and everything that was going to be done. And it, we just did what we did, you know, as a community. But it brought everybody closer because we had done that together. We all worked together for that. And I think in any kind of community thing, you know, it's like you work at the food bank or you work for CARES or you do any of those things. It's a community thing that you're doing. Um, just looking at my list here of, of some questions, which you've hit on pretty much everything. Um, do you, I, I'm asking really everyone this, but um, are, are you, have you been affected by weather since, since that time? Do you get nervous around storms? When I see the sky turning colors other than what I think it should be, um, kind of greenish. It's and you know you look in your rearview mirror and you can see the sky and it's like, oh, what's that? You know, y yeah, yeah. You do, you do. You think of that. You can't help it. Yeah, we got we have people that definitely we've interviewed that go both ways. I mean, some very traumatically were in, 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 you know in, uh, affected. Um, who were physically in the tornado yeah. um, and others that, you know, are just more aware of clouds, how they move and how fast they're moving and their color and wind. I have, we had interviewed one guy who, 
he he made he became like an amateur meteorologist you know in that he knows barometer and you know winds he, he, he says i need to do that just for myself when the weather yeah. is you know it makes me feel better you know and it's like wow the wind doesn't bother me so much you know because these last few days have been really really windy but the sun was shining and you know it wasn't because of a storm it was just wind right um one of the questions we have on here is is maybe is there is there one takeaway is there one lesson is there something that changed in you after this experience that you may have, you've carried with you since that time i think telling people how you feel about them in a positive way um because you may not get that chance again i hear so many people say oh i wish i had said this before somebody died or i wish i had done that do it just do it and and when people don't want to talk about something it's okay but at least ask you know because there's so many times that people walk by people and think oh you know i should be helping them but i but i don't know how they're going to be affected by that just try if you if you go and you want to help somebody and they say no i'm okay okay at least you tried you know 